ISO 27001 and it's a 5.21, 5.21, information security in the ICT supply chain. So managing information security in the ICT supply chain, this is a brand new control. There are many places, right, where the standard is pointless. <laughs> and this is absolutely one of them, right? We've introduced the new control for absolutely no reason whatsoever. What do I mean by that? What we're looking here is we're looking at treating our ICT suppliers as suppliers. And we've already covered that in the previous two. In the previous two Annex A tutorials, we've covered the management of suppliers. An ICT supplier is a supplier. The standard also messes around by introducing a new control on cloud suppliers, which again is completely pointless because you're just going to manage it through third party supplier management. So what, let's have a little look at it anyway, and then I'll cover it off for you. But look at supplier management uh, and agreements in the supply chain uh, from the previous tutorials. What does the definition say? What is the mind blowing definition? All right, the mind-blowing definition is processes and procedures should be defined and implemented to manage the information security risks associated with ICT products, services, supply chain, right? So what we're looking at here is it likes to use terminology, whether or not that terminology is up to date, out of date, whether or not it's trying to get a new thing going so that everybody calls it ICT or not. I have no idea. What they say, ICT, information and communication technology, right? ICT, information and communication technology or technologies. It's the infrastructure and the components that enable modern computing, right? So what we're we doing here, we're treating them as a supplier. That's all they are, they're, is, they're a supplier. So we're gonna follow our third party supplier management process that's already documented and available in the 27001 toolkit and in tutorials and videos. We're gonna record them on that third party supplier register as we would everybody else. And we're gonna risk assess them to understand what the risks may be associated with IT, I'm gonna call it that, uh, with IT suppliers. And we're gonna address any specific uh, risks that may crop up, that may be identified in there, right? So what we're looking at here is, you know, some guidance specifically around IT, right? So, you know, identification of critical components, if that makes sense for you, are we looking at critical components within their supply chain, be it software or hardware? Can we trace that through the supply chain? Can we get assurances that the components that they're using are secure? So suppliers of suppliers, that may be relevant to you. You know, the provision of hard, hardware and Wi-Fi routers that, that come from certain states that other certain states don't like to implement. Okay, but you would identify that through risk management. You're gonna want some level of assurance that the products uh, or services are functioning as expected and we already cover that in supplier management and that we've got the appropriate security levels in place, again, covered as part of supplier management, right? So we're gonna be making sure that they've got appropriate certificates, industry certificates appropriate to that product and service, 27001 SOC 2 report, or if there's anything specific that you need and if you've got any worries whatsoever through your right to audit or some other mechanism by which you can engage an audit, you're gonna do an audit of them to give yourselves even more assurances that they're doing the right thing if that's needed and you're gonna manage it through risk management, right? You've got all those rules for sharing uh, information, all of the other Annex A uh, rules apply. It's supplier management. It's managed through the third party supplier register. There is nothing in here. It's an easy win when it comes to the audit, right? You can go through your supplier register and go, these are the ICT suppliers and you can show them the contracts. You can show them the assurances that you've got. So there is nothing overly to worry about in here. One of the things that people get wrong is, you know, you haven't got those agreements in place. It's the same, supplier management. You haven't got agreements in place. The agreements have lapsed, they're out of date. The agreements don't cover the products and services that you've got. If intellectual property is important to you, you haven't included who's got the rights over the intellectual property and the copyright. All of the things that your legal team are going to advise you to do when you engage and that you're going to understand and that you're going to be managing, uh, you don't have it, right? And that's a massive mistake that we see. Uh, or that you don't have assurances that they're doing the right thing. And again, that can happen with any supplier, right? You haven't got a 27,001 certificate, SOC 2 report, a PCI DSS report. You've got no assurances that they're doing the right thing. Um, but again, if you're managing that through risk management and it's on your risk register, then it isn't necessarily going to be a mistake. You're going to be managing risk. 27,001 is a risk-based system. So uh, what has ICT done? It's introduced new terminology, ICT, when actually it's just... IT, but okay, fine, we want to introduce ICT. And then it's repeated itself uh, again to talk about supplier management and supplier agreements, right? 
So nothing to worry about here. Read the blog that's below, uh, go through it. Um, but yeah, just don't worry about it, right? For now, you're gonna be absolutely golden. I am Stuart Barker, I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. Sometimes I can be a curmudgeon. I call it out when it's bullshit and this is bullshit, uh, but they wanna put it in, they wanna pad it out, so that's up to them. Until the next tutorial, peace out.